So a lot of people out there have been buying the M4 Mac Mini because it is such a great device. And I've seen a lot of people buying the base model 256 gigabytes. Now, although that is the best value for money because when you go out and you start upgrading on the Apple website to that 512, one terabyte, it does start being a lot more money, not so good value for money. And a lot of people are worried about that 256 gigabytes. It's good now, but over time, as you start downloading more and more applications, how fast will it go down? And are you gonna have enough storage on there just for general day-to-day -day usage. Well, something I'm gonna show you today should save you a lot of storage on your M4 Mac Mini and hopefully help you in the long run. I'm gonna show you how you can get your existing apps that are on your Mac Mini transferred over to an external drive and run them directly from the external drive, in essence, saving you a lot of space on your M4 Mac Mini. And also what I'm gonna show you is when you're downloading apps from the App Store directly, anything over one gigabyte, you can have it downloaded directly to the external drive to be ready to run that way bypassing the whole going to the internal, copying over and all that situation. So if it's your first time here, I'm Almir aka Mr. HTech. On this channel, we make tech simple. I've seen a lot of you out there subscribing to the channel. We're almost at 17,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below. Like the video if you liked it, share it with your friends and family who might also benefit from this type of content. And let's go check out how we can transfer apps to an external drive to save you space and money. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your external drive and plug it into your M4 Mac Mini. Right, so now that we're actually in the system, you can see I've got my external drive here that's come up. If you don't see your external drive here, there's a very easy way to get these visible on your desktop. All you have to do is go to the Finder, go to Settings, and then there's gonna be an option in general to show these items on your desktop. You can have your hard disk, external disk, etc. So if you tick that, if it's not ticked, then you'll have access to your external disks as soon as you're plugged in in here. Obviously, if you untick it, they won't be visible, but you'll have them still visible in the Finder application here. So, what first thing we need to do is go to Disk Utility. And the reason for this is we need to make sure that the external drive is the right format. Right now, it's not. And we need to have it, so we need to go Erase. So if you have anything on this external drive that you want to save, make sure you transfer that off the drive because we're gonna be erasing it. At the moment, it's on XFAT, and we need to erase it and format it to APFS, which is Apple's own file system. So we're gonna erase that external drive now. And the reason we need to erase it is so it acts as the Apple file system, and then we can actually use it for the applications, otherwise it won't work. So now it's erased, it should be perfectly fine. And what we're gonna do is simply open up Finder. We've got the external drive on the side here. And then on the other side, we're gonna have applications. And it's super simple. All we have to do, whatever application we want, say for example, Adobe Lightroom, we're just gonna click it, drag it over to the external drive. It's gonna start copying. Once it is copied, we can then right click on the Adobe Lightroom move the trash from the actual internal drive. And let me just put my password in. There we go, after I put my password in, it's all done. And then what else can we put? For example, let's find, so CapCut for example as well, we'll drag that over. And once that's done, we can move the trash. Now, if you hold command while dragging over the app, then what it's gonna do is act like a cut and paste. So it's gonna delete it straight from the actual internal drive and copy it over to the external. I like to be more safe than sorry. So what I prefer to do is just copy it over first, make sure it's copied and then remove it from my internal drive, just in case there's any issue with the actual copying process. So now that these are copied over, I can show you that we can click cap cut from the external drive. It should load up straight away. So it's verifying it. And now we've got CapCut running from the external drive, perfectly fine. Saving us space on our internal drive. Same for Lightroom, we can click on Lightroom to have it run from the external, just has to verify. And we've got Lightroom running, perfectly fine. So as you can see, just these two apps, for example, Lightroom and CapCut, was very quick to copy over to the actual external drive, and if I check out the size of them, so Lightroom alone, 2.5 gigabytes, 
CapCut is 1.73 gigabytes. So we're already saving over four gigabytes just in these two files from our internal drive by having them on the external. So you can do that with so many more applications and you don't have to worry about the internal drive getting cramped up with storage. And yeah, be perfectly fine. Another thing you can do, let me show you, is if you go into the actual App Store, so let's find the App Store, and then we're gonna go over to App Store Settings, and you see the section where it says download and install large apps to a separate disk. So any large apps that are over one gigabyte, you can have them downloaded directly onto the external drive that we just set up. And that way you don't have to mess around with having them on the internal and then copying them over yourself. If you want the actual apps on the internal drive, then make sure to untick this and they'll be downloaded to the internal drive instead. Now, this does work with the majority of apps. There may be some apps out there, I'm not 100% sure I don't know everything. There may be some apps out there that this won't work with, but as long as you can do 90% of your apps onto the external drive, then a couple apps that you have to have on the inter internal drive won't be much of an issue at all. So there you go. Hopefully that video helped you recouping some of that storage back from your internal drive and making that 256 gigabytes last you a lot longer. Now I'm gonna be having a video coming out very soon with different ways you can increase the storage of your M4 Mac Mini. Of course, it won't be the internal storage because although that is user removable, it's not easily user replaceable. It involves a lot of soldering, something I don't really do. But if this is the last video of mine you'll watch this year, happy new year. Remember to subscribe, like, share with your friends and family. I'll catch you on the next one and thanks for watching.